New construction is all the rage in Dallas, but what if you want a shorter commute? In order to get that, you're going to have to consider pre-owned homes, and you need to know those come with some major risks in Dallas. Well, hello, hello, I'm Wendy Pinnell, and more and more of our buyers are finding they have to go back to the office. A lot of times it's just, you know, a hybrid model of like two to three days a week, but either way, suddenly the reality of commuting comes back into play and that one hour drive to get to where all the new construction is, well, it really isn't looking all that appealing. So, you know, we talk a lot about new construction on my channel, but with more and more of our buyers being drawn closer to their jobs, we need to talk about the huge risks in pre-owned homes, many of which are completely unique to Dallas. So let's talk about the biggie you're going to run into in Dallas. Let's talk about foundation problems. World Wide Life describes foundation problems like this. The upward movement caused by soil expansion is known as slab heave or upheaval. They go on to explain slab heave can produce differential pressures across a foundation, making it prone to failure and slowly causing damage to a home. Now, bringing that home to Texas, they explain common Texas house foundation issues include cracks in the walls and brick, leaning chimneys, sticking doors and windows, water damage, and more. So as a buyer in Dallas, how do you make a wise purchase in the midst of all these foundation problems, right? Because again, if you don't want an hour long commute to work, chances are you're going to have to consider a pre-owned home. Well, there are six lies you need to be on the lookout for. But before we get to those, I want to show you what you can expect to see in a home with foundation repairs. Okay, so this is a typical foundation report that you would see attached to a home for sale that has had previous foundation repairs, written by an engineer who has basically observed the repairs. They came out before it was done, and then they came out after it was done, and they basically agree that whatever the foundation company has done is acceptable to building codes. Now, the interesting thing I've noticed about this particular home is the part on the report where the engineer says a large amount of thin set floor leveling was visible at the time of inspection. The elevations taken may not accurately depict the amount of slope in the floor, due to the use of this topical floor leveling technique. Now, what you should know about this comment, and I'm not necessarily saying that it happened with this listing, but a lot of times, this is how people will try to make a floor look level without actually spending the money to fix up the foundation. They'll fix it from the top up instead of fixing underneath where the root of the problem is. All right, now the engineer continues saying, the foundation has experienced a measurable amount of differential settlement and lateral movement evidenced by cracking in the exterior concrete veneer and some slope in the floor. So these are just his visceral observations. And then he adds that complete leveling should not be expected. So as a buyer, you have to know that the location of foundation problems in the home, even after it's been fixed, cannot be expected to be completely level. The engineer also says here that due to the soil type in the area, the foundation may experience movement and settlement in the future. And then he wraps it all up by saying, limit of liability shall be the fee paid for this report. Okay, moving on to the next page. It shows us a diagram of the home before the repairs were completed. Anytime you're looking at a home that has had foundation problems, you always want to make sure that you see a page like this because sometimes what they give you will only have a warranty certificate. Okay, that is not enough. It's vital that you see these elevations that show the difference in how unlevel the floor is. For example, in this particular home, you can see the shape of the house and then right in the middle, you'll see the ground zero. So basically the engineer considered this one section to be the starting point for what he decides is level ground or ground zero. Now, if you're facing the front door and you look to the right, you're gonna see that this whole side of the house is very high. You've got to know ground zero to compare the rest of the house to. And that right side of the house has elevations of 1.9 inches, 2, 2.3, 
2.4, and then 2.3 again. Over here in this corner, it is 3.8 inches higher than the middle of the home. And then this one is 3.3 inches. So tell me, how are you going to correct a foundation that's too high? Because the whole point of these piers, all these little dots, is that they're gonna dig in there and they're gonna provide support to lift the foundation. But in this case, you have a house where the foundation is too high. Now, if you're facing the front door again and you look on the left side, you can see over here that this side of the home has fallen. I mean, look at all these negative measurements. Take a look at the negative 1.4 right here. It's saying that between the zero and 1.4, this area is 1.4 inches lower than the ground zero that you can see over here. Then you also have a negative 2.0 and another negative 2.0 right here. I mean, you can see this whole section of the house is lower than the zero, and then the whole other side of the house is higher. If you look at the garage, you can see how far it is. Negative 4.0 right up against the driveway, negative 3.1, negative 1.9, and negative 2.0. Between this part right here, this negative 4.0, and then this front corner at a positive 3.8, you have almost eight inches of difference in the leveling. Think about what a difference eight inches is to a house. Like this is eight inches. Okay, you have that much of a difference from one corner of the house to another. So what's gonna happen in a home like that? Well, the doors won't latch and sometimes they won't even close. If there's a ceramic tile, it's gonna crack. I mean, you're gonna have huge drywall cracks. You'll have gaps around the windows where cold air will get in. You'll try to fill it in with caulk, but you can only make the caulk so thick when there's a huge gap between the window and the rest of the house. Okay, so we know that this sketch is before the repairs were done. We also have the engineer saying, per your request, my representative or I have returned to the referenced property to conduct a final inspection of the work performed by, and then it names the foundation company, and then it says the following are my on-site observations. So he's trying to talk about how the concrete piers were installed. And next he says, at the time of the inspection, the work pertaining to the repairing of the foundation and the backfilling of the soil along the perimeter of the house was complete. Now listen to this part. The house is not level, but it has been stabilized and supported, in my opinion, the work performed by, okay, and then it names the foundation company, was satisfactory. All work meets or exceeds the intent of the 2021 IRC building code. Okay, now let's take a look at the diagram of the house after the repairs. And remember, this is what the engineer says that he finds to be satisfactory. Once again, we can see right here, this is our ground zero. And remember, the right side of the house was too high and the left side of the house was too low. So we would anticipate that after repairs, we would love to see a level house, right? Well, let's just see what we actually have after the repairs. Over in this corner, you have a 1.6 inch. So that's how high it is after the repairs. Then you have 1.6, 1 1.4, and 1.3. Then you have 1.7 inches, 2.4 inches, and this corner that was so high, it was 3.8. Well, now it's at 3.0. So that really isn't that much better, is it? Now let's look over here on the left side. So if you're facing the front door again, the left side had fallen. It was so low, right? So we would hope that it would be better now. Well, after repairs, it's a negative 1.4 inch, a negative 1.8 inch, and a negative 1.4 inch. Again, this is after all the repairs. And the engineer says that this house meets building code standards. Let's look at the garage, okay? Negative 3.4, negative 2.9, and negative 3.8. And this was, again, the final post repairs engineer's report. Keep in mind, this is the best they could get on leveling this house. And guess what? This house went under contract after only 19 days. So some poor unsuspecting soul is under contract to buy a home that after the foundation is repaired has a differential of 6.4 inches from the front right corner to the back left corner. Okay, so now that you know what to look for, 
and what it looks like. I wanna tell you about those six lies so you won't be susceptible to it. All right, so you ready? The first lie is every Texas home has it. So many times, you know, a realtor eager to earn a sale will tell you, you know, every Texas home either already has foundation problems, and if it doesn't have it yet, it will at some point. They'll tell you that you won't be able to find a home without foundation problems, so you, know, you might as well just buy this home anyways. If you're new to Texas, you might think that's true, but it's not, okay? It all depends on the soil it's built on and the materials and engineering of the builder. For example, the soil where we live, it's very rocky and we have no foundation problems. It's not clay-like at all. Now, what is true, is that if you find a home with foundation problems, it's likely that the homes in the entire neighborhood that are built by the same builder, it's likely that they'll also have it. There are entire areas that I know have foundation problems. All right, moving on. Second lie is this, a warranty is a warranty. All right, so how easily do we tend to overlook a home's condition right when we hear the word warranty? Okay, but hear me when I say, do not put your faith in a warranty. Usually a home will have foundation repairs along one side of the home and that section will have a lifetime warranty. But when the home begins to have cracks again and you make a warranty call, you almost always end up hearing that it isn't the repaired side that needs work. Now you need foundation repaired on another side and another side and so on. You have to get to the point where there is no other area of the home they can point to that needs work. And guess what? Even if you get work done around the entire perimeter, then they're gonna say that you need interior piers, which are even that much more expensive. A warranty is barely ever a warranty that will protect you until the entire perimeter and underneath the house has piers. So let's just say you have that warranty that covers every inch of your home's foundation. There's nothing covering the damage inside the home. So every time that foundation shifts, you'll have more drywall cracks. So you can make a warranty call but you still have to spend money to fix the drywall cracks. Concrete Network comments on this saying, most foundation companies warranty their work for the lifetime of the home and the warranty is transferable to each owner. However, this is a common trap that homeowners run into. They continue explaining, not only should you closely scrutinize the warranty and what it covers, you should also remember that a warranty is only as good as the company behind it. Okay, so what should you be looking for in the company? Well, according to Concrete Network, look for longevity. Many companies will simply go out of business to avoid the backlog of warranty work, and then they'll just open under a new name. Ask if a company has insurance, such as a warranty trust that protects you if in the future they're not around. Okay, moving on to lie number three. A warranty means it's fixed. Now, I wanna tell you a little bit about our personal story when we think about that, okay? In 2003, we began buying rental homes. And over the course of five years, we bought like 40 rentals. And almost all of these homes had foundation problems because those were the cheapest homes to buy. So we became very familiar with what to look for and how foundation problems behaved. Uh, we didn't have, I gotta tell you this, we didn't have a single home where a warranty actually meant the home was fixed. All of our experience has shown us that once a home has foundation problems, it is never permanently fixed. It is a lifelong scourge that runs with the home, whether we like it or not. Next up, lie number four, an engineer's report means it's fixed. Now, I think this one pretty much speaks for itself, right, based on what we were just looking at. An engineer will sign off on a home that isn't even remotely level as long as it passes the building code. And, and that home is still gonna have drywall cracks, doors that won't close, cracked tile. I've actually seen a house where the foundation cracked in half down the middle of the living room floor. But let's just say you are determined to shorten your commute so you decide on Plano. Now Plano is pre-owned home territory and there aren't that many homes to choose from. And lo and behold, every home you find has had previous foundation work. But know what, you see a warranty, you know, and an engineer has signed off on the home providing an engineer's report. You really want that short commute. And there isn't that much out there to look at. 
FOMO sets in, and after all, it does have an engineer's report, so you bite and you buy the home. But you've gotta remember the conclusion from lie number three, foundation problems are never permanently fixed. And as we just saw, right, even with an engineer's report, a home can be nowhere near level. So don't put your faith in the fact that there's an engineer's report. Okay, moving on to lie number five, it won't affect resale value. You need to know there are realtors everywhere, okay, or at least I hope there are, that are going to take the time to read the reports with their buyers and explain foundation problems. I mean, we have a client right now that we've looked at probably a dozen homes with them, and I keep on recommending they pass on the ones with foundation problems. It's better to take your time than to buy a home that won't go up in value because it has a fundamental flaw. If you want your next home purchase to be a solid investment, just don't buy a home with foundation issues. Okay, moving on to lie number six, it's actually fixed. With all of the rentals we had with foundation problems, right? We never once saw a home that was stabilized by foundation repair and actually stayed stable. What we saw was the home constantly resettling and constantly seeing new drywall cracks emerge. And yeah, you can have the company come out and do adjustments, but that's not gonna fix the constant drywall cracks you'll have throughout the home. Now, lest I've completely scared you to death about foundation problems in pre-owned homes, you need to know there are plenty of homes that don't have foundation problems at all. Your 70s homes tend to be the most common, and yet I've found plenty of 70s homes that don't have foundation problems at all. It all has to do with the soil the home is built upon and the quality of materials the builder used. So you shouldn't give up on the entire pre-owned market. If you want a shorter commute, you really will need to consider them. Uh, you just need to know what signs to look for or work with a realtor who does. And, and speaking of which, by the way, if we sound like your kind of people, definitely check out our Let's Find Home questionnaire. You can find that in the description section. Now, when we think about pre-owned homes in Dallas, new construction is decimating the pre-owned housing market. We have negotiated some unbelievable deals because your average seller can't compete with all the incentives new construction offers. I talk all about that in this video, which you may wanna watch next. In the meantime, Wendy out.